What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about a Nutty Granola Crunch Tea and the Noodler's Neponset Fountain Pen. Nutty Granola Crunch, if you go out into the woods today, be sure to pack plenty of snacks like this rich and nutty blend of apple, almonds, coconut, and sweet brittle. It's like a granola bar in a cup. The ingredients are apple, rooibos tea, almonds, coconut, brittle, which is sugar, hazelnuts, and inverted sugar. I don't know what that is. Um, natural and artificial flavoring, and it uh, warning contains almonds, coconut, and hazelnut. So this is a rooibos tea, which means it's caffeine-free. Uh, you put it into boiling water, you let it steep for about seven minutes. Um, rooibos is a bit of a, a weaker tea blend, so you generally want to let it steep long. Um, and you take about just a teaspoon or so. Um, this is one of their fall limited edition teas. Um, so it's probably only going to be around until about December. And I wish you could smell this. But if you want to be able to smell it, just pick up a Reese's peanut butter cup. And take off a little bit of the chocolate smell. And that's what this smells like. The peanut butter of a Reese's peanut butter cup. And that's also what it tastes like. <laughs> Um, I'm not usually a fan of rooibos tea. I'm also not usually a fan of um, like nutty type flavored teas, um, but I got the fall set and so that's why I got this one because um, it came a part of that. Um, it's not a gross tea by any means. Um, I did like the flavor. It's just, it's odd um, because it literally tastes like you're drinking a cup of a peanut butter butter from the peanut butter like Reese's peanut butter cups so it's it's super weird it's it's got like a slightly oily thick consistency um which I'm assuming comes from the nuts um and I don't typically like that um so I wouldn't buy this again um it's seven dollars 98 cents for 50 grams but if you do like nutty type teas um then definitely pick this one up if you like the peanut butter from Reese's peanut butter cups definitely pick this one up uh, because you might like it um as far as like the rooibos goes you don't really taste much of the rooibos tea flavor um because it's just primarily overwhelmed by that uh, peanut buttery type flavor um so this came with 25 grams in here uh and I still have like half of that left um, so I'm not going to pick up any more, um, but if that sounds appealing to you, then go for it. And I would jump on it soon, uh, like I said, because it's probably only going to be out for another month or so. Um, with that tea for today, I have paired the Noodler's Neponset Fountain Pen, um, which hopefully you watched uh, my video that I posted on how to eyedropper convert this, because that's what I've done. That's why the lid and the body are two different colors. Um, because I have eyedroppered this with Pilot Iroshizuku Yamabudo. Um, so the pen looks more like the lid when it's empty or when you're using the converter, um, which comes with something like this. So this would screw uh, onto the back of the barrel, just like any converter would. Um, and in order to fill it, you pull the um, piston rod here up, um, you know, you could do it a few times and that will suck up the ink so that this will become full of ink. And then this will be sitting in the bodily, bodily? <laughs> body and barrel apparently become bodily. So this will be sitting in the bodily of your pen. <laughs> um, but I've chosen to show you guys how to eyedrop or convert it. Um, so I took this out and that's why I have it like such. Um, so yes, your pen will look primarily like this color. This is the John Mung color. Um, or finish, but there are like just a ridiculous amount of finishes that you can get for this and all the other Noodler's pens as well. Um, but I thought this one looked pretty dang cool and I don't mind the fact that the barrel becomes a completely different color than the body um, when it's filled. Um, so that doesn't bother me, but I know it might bother some of you. So maybe get one of the solid colors. Um, you can get even ebonite ones. Um, but anyway, so top of the pen, nothing really too much going on. It just kind of like carries through. You get the typical Noodler's clip that has some pretty decent tension. Um, that's, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. It just says Noodler's ink on the uh, clip here. 
Um, and around the center band, it's just all silver, and once again, it just says Noodler's Ink. Um, there's really nothing too fancy with Noodler's pens, if you're familiar with them at all. Um, Nathan Tardif, the maker of them, tries to keep them as simple as possible, as economical as possible, um, and so that's why there's no like crazy embellishments. And if I open this barrel up, because, you know, nothing is down here to explain, if I open this up, the nib is very simple as well. Now, the, what makes the Neponset different from all the other pens, and again, I'll try and get a better close-up in a moment, is that this is a music nib. So there are three tines versus the typical two. Um, so rather than two tines flexing open like all of his others, you're now going to have three tines that'll flex open. Uh, so you can get a wider um, line than normal. Um, so that's what makes the Noodler's Neponset uh, a little bit more special and a little bit more pricey over all the other models um, that Nathan Tardif offers. Um, it will also depend on the finish. I believe if you get an ebonite finish, it'll be a little bit more expensive, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> so you get the steel music nib, um, and you get the ebonite feed that comes with it. Um, if I open this up, there's going to be an ink explosion everywhere, but basically it just opens up to an empty barrel that I have eyedropper converted. Again, if you want to see that, I will link it in the iCard um, so that you can watch that as well. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to explain to this pen. It's a relatively um, simple build um, because, like I said, he likes to keep it that way. Um, you can push to post. It doesn't post super deep. Um, it posts this far, um, but I mean, it becomes really long if you do that. So, um, even most guys that I know, they don't, um, it fits very comfortably in my hand without posting. Um, and the grip section is relatively large. Um, so I like that. The pen itself is long, um, in comparison to the other Noodler's pens. So I have the Noodler's Ahab, uh, the Conrad, the acrylic Conrad, and then the Neponset, it is super, super long. So the Neponset is the longest out of the three. So holding them down at the base. Um, the Ahab is the smallest, then the Conrad, and then the Neponset. So the Neponset is a big pen. Um, it is also the widest of the three. So the acrylic Conrad is the smallest, then the Noodler's Ahab, and then the Neponset. Um, as far as like the width, so the girth of the pen. Um, and if I uncap them, it pretty much is the same thing for the grip size as well. Um, as far as the Neponset, or sorry, the um, acrylic Conrad is the smallest. This is a piston fill. Uh, the Ahab is in the middle. Uh, the Ahab uses the exact same um, filling mechanism as the Neponset. Um, but only has a two-tie nib, um, and then the uh, Neponset next to it. Um, but I still find the grip section big enough where my thumb doesn't really hit the threads, um, but even if they did, they're smooth. You're not really going to feel them, so no worries on that one. Um, I really like it because it writes very wet. It has to because there's three tines. <laughs> Um, it's beautiful in my opinion. The like chatoyance that comes out of this is just insane. Um, and this isn't even good lighting. Like if you saw it in person, oh, it's just, it's sexy. <laughs> um, you can obviously eyedropper convert it. So that's a bonus. Not everyone is going to like to do that because you can get into some issues when you eyedropper, like burping and things like that. Um, and I typically don't eyedropper my pens ever. Um, but these are the only ones that I really do. Um, because you can put five milliliters of ink in this, um, and that's going to last you a good long while. Um, it's very smooth just for everyday writing. The clip works really nicely. Um, you can get a whole bunch of different finishes. Uh, you got the ebonite feed, which I really enjoy, um, which means that you can heat set that uh, ebonite feed. Um, Brian Goulet has a really nice heat setting video. Um, so if you want to head over to the Goulet Pen Company's YouTube channel as well um, to learn how to do that, they have those. Um, the only downsides really to this pen, and that goes for all Noodler's pens, is that they can be finicky. Um, so they can railroad a little bit. <clears throat> you have to play around with the uh, nib and the feed as far as like the placement goes. 
Um, so you can definitely have some issues. When they work, they work beautifully. Um, but they do have a tendency to sometimes not work. Um, so you have to play around with it. They're meant to be like a tinkerer's pen. Um, which for the Ahab and the Conrad, I don't mind because they're really inexpensive. And most other flex pens, you're going to be paying a good dollar for in order to get them. Um, once it starts getting into the Neponset range, I wish there was a, maybe a different op option for the nib and the feed. Not necessarily the feed, but the nib. Um, or at least that it's set all together <clears throat> so that you don't have to take it apart. The good thing about taking it apart, completely taking it apart, is that you can clean it really, really well. Um, but the downside is, of course, that you have to then fiddle with it as soon as you put it back. Um, and it's a fairly, it's starting to get fairly expensive for, I think, what it's worth. Um, so for US dollars, it's 75. So Canada, that translates into just under 100 bucks. So still relatively, relatively inexpensive when it comes to music nibs and flex nibs. Um, but for that price, having possibly the not greatest experience writing um, could be a big roadblock for a lot of people. I'm comfortable working with these only because I have so much experience with these already. Um, so I would maybe recommend getting either the Ahab or the Conrad first um, to see you know, what your experience is like because these are less expensive um, before jumping into this. The only difference really between these and this is that this is a music nib and this doesn't. So this can get a little bit more broad, a little bit more wet than the regular um, noodlers can. Um, so it's up to you. If you've never used them before and you want to jump right into the music nib, by all means, go for it. Like, just ignore what I just said. <laughs> um, but just know that you may not get a perfect writing pen right out of the box. You may have to put some work into it. Um, but once it's it's writing well, it, they're beautiful. Um, but uh, let's jump into the writing sample though, um, and I'll show you what the music nib can actually do. So I'm no good at flex writing, but we got the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Um, again, this is the Noodler's Neponset that has been eyedropper filled with Pilot Eroshizuku Yamabuto. And this is the music nib. So it's three times. And if my camera can focus, there we go. Um, so this nib is very, very smooth. Um, it just glides across the paper. Basically, it's a broad nib, pretty much, because it's a music nib, so it's three. Um, so it's it's going to be really broad, but obviously you can take it from maybe a medium broad, and when you flex those tines, it railroaded a little bit on that one. Uh, when you flex the tines, you can really make it happen. Now, if you push it too hard, obviously, I'm getting some railroading on this second one here. You can fill them in, but it's a bit of a pain. Um, I have not altered this one at all since getting it out of the box um, so that I could do a true review. Um, but Noodlers is basically, of course, known for being able to fiddle with it. So you can fiddle with the placement of the nib and the feed um, to alter slightly your writing uh, style. Um, and it looks like I'm getting some railroading out of that third time right now. Um, but that is a very realistic thing that you will have with Noodlers pens. Um, but you know, they're relatively inexpensive and the vast majority of pens cannot do this kind of, uh, flexing. So, I mean, when I was flexing here, I had no issues when you push it, it does. But anyways, um, uh, reverse writing, this wasn't a skip, by the way, I just didn't touch the end of the paper. You certainly can. And the flow is pretty dang good. Um, it's slightly scratchy, but you can definitely get a much thinner line um, than anything else. Um, as far as like hard starts or skips, um, I haven't had any when I just write like normal. Um, so like this kind of thing. Obviously, I had some railroading happen here. So when you're going to push it to its max, um, then definitely you're going to get some issues every once in a while. Um, but for just everyday regular writing and even a little bit of flex, I haven't had any issues with this. Um, but like I said, it's very uh, 
common that you could have an issue with uh, noodler's pens for that. Um, that's why they are meant, you know, meant for tinkerers. Um, so you can fiddle with the nib and the feed. Um, you can heat set them because it is an ebonite feed. Um, so you can kind of play around with it. Um, as far as the wetness goes for just regular writing, it is a wet pen, but it has to be uh, because it needs to keep up when you want to do something like that. Um, obviously, when you push it that far, it's just a stupid amount of ink. So, I mean, if I were to smush that, it's going to be going for a good long while. Um, but I definitely prefer wet pens. So for me, that's beautiful. Um, you know, so I really like this pen. Like I said, I, I'm not a flex writer, so it's not something that I go to very often. Um, but I really do like having the option. Um, you know, when need be. But guys, that is going to be about it for me today. Um, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Um, every uh, Monday and Friday, there are new videos that come out um, and the occasional Tuesday as well. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and want to see more like it. Um, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, requests, anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do read them all and I try and respond as soon as I can. And as always, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.